Hi there, this is David, and welcome back to Let's Play Wild Arms 5. Today we're in the TF Tower F. That's the first one that we're going to be doing. And, um, let's go ahead and go inside this place. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of poles that we have to climb. It's just going to get more and more complicated uh, as we go on. But that's not the worst of the little gimmicks that we have going on in here. Anyway, first things first, it starts off pretty simple. Use your power shot on that switch, which then makes these floors start disappearing. But then over here, what we got to do is hit these other little switches. If you didn't hit that other switch first, then those little purple barriers would have been in the way. And then you couldn't, you know, hit these little triangles off. So make sure you hit that switch in the middle first to open up that door. Hey, hey. But we don't want to go through there first. What we want to do is, whoa, wait until that appears. Jump over that gap, head this way. And then what we're going to have here is um, some hidden platforms. Yeah, I got to use the detector there. And then you got to jump up here. And then here is where having the right camera angle is of utmost importance. I like to have it to the side like this so that you can really see where you're go going. Yeah. <laughs> if you fall down, then you're going to be down here. And let me get my camera angle back to where I want it. Eh, or we can have a random battle. That works, too. Okay, what do we have here? We have the Vespers, who are weak to Earth, and the Coyote, who is weak to Wind. Do I have either Earth or Wind? Oh, I have Earth. Perfect! Okay, there we go. Let's see. And then I'm going to have to do that jumping, and if I can't make those jumps, which is more than likely the case, <laughs> I'll probably just cut until whenever I can get the jumps made. Um, because we all know how horrible I am at that stuff. And I've talked about maybe doing, like, Xenogears or something in the future, but then I always think, you know, the Tower of Babel, and just how horrible, horrible, horrible it was with all the jumping. And even if I use, like, an emulator with save states and stuff like that, it's still just, just the thought of it. Just the thought of it is enough to be like, oh, hell no. But I may one day do it. We shall forward. see. We must support Dean. Look at that experience! 18,000 experience! Yeah. It's at this point where the game gets pretty difficult, I've got to say, so uh, you're going to want to make sure that you have uh, decent levels for all your characters. We're talking like between, I would say, 65 and 70 would be good levels here, so if I can't make this jump, I'll cut to whenever I can, so here we go, here we go, onto that trampoline, onto that trampoline, onto, whoa, woohoo, I made it, awesome. Okay, get a wing amulet, and get some duplicators, nice. Okay, so go on out here. And now we're going to take that northern door that we opened up by hitting those switches. But first, a cutscene! like your costume, Greg. Yeah, what's going on? Oh, okay, your kid. Yeah, yeah. No matter how much revenge you take out, uh, he's not coming back. Oh, really? Huh. Who's he talking to now? Is he talking to everybody, or is he talking just to Avril? I'm assuming he's talking to everybody, even though it was Avril who brought it up. Okay. Yeah, yeah, your life pretty much did stop on that day. You know, and that's totally understandable. Huh. Hopefully. You know, Greg deserves to move on with his life. He deserves to be happy. Poor guy. I'll make him happy. <laughs> Okay. Oh, well that's nice. Yeah, you know, you're half my age, but you've the wisdom of somebody twice my age. Of course! When you're 15 years old and you're a teenager, you know so much more than somebody in their 30s who's been married and had a kid and was a father. You're so much wiser and worldly. Give me a break. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ted probably would have. I mean, both of you, you know, put your arms out in front of Kartikeya and you, you know, saved your life, or Mary's life in Ted's case. Your life in Dean's case. Oh, well, yeah, that's nice. Oh, and what would that be? What would the meaning for your revenge possibly be? Yeah, you don't know either. Nobody knows! We're just doing it just because. Why not? Sounds like a good enough reason to me. We're doing it because the plot dictates it. Uh, sounds like every other JRPG I ever play. 
Okay, so again, we have more poles to climb, but this one isn't so bad. So let's see, just make it all the way up. And whenever you're jumping off, it's nice to line it up um, immediately with the platform that you want to get to. So there's the platform that I want to get to. So line yourself up nicely, then jump off. Otherwise, you could fall that entire way, and that would really screw you. So here, what we need to do is, first things first, use our detector, and reveals a secret passage. Yeah, head on in there, and detector again. And, hmm, I wonder where these passages are. Yeah, the gem's pretty much given away. But, there's some treasure! Get another dragon fossil, that'll come in handy for, um, you know, upgrading our arms and all that good stuff. And a growth egg. Awesome. Not that I really need it, because I already got those through synthesizing, but, eh, it is what it is. Also, before you head up these stairs, I'm going to take Avril out of my party and put Rebecca into my party. I probably, well, what is she equipped with? Oh, she actually, actually has, um, accessories. I was thinking that she didn't have accessories or anything. But this guy can be rather difficult, and for the bosses, at this time, you want a healer. And Rebecca's my healer. For the random battles, it's nice just to have, you know, the lucky badge for stealing, or for, um, you know, just the extra attack power, things like that. But for right now, as far as, um, you know, killing these guys is concerned, you want to make sure that you have, um, a healer for the boss battles. Okay, Dean. I'm gonna move Dean over here. There we go. You want to kill this guy on the left-hand side first. Rebecca, just get off that hex, just so you can just kind of hang out and do anything you need to do. Uh, you know what? Let's actually examine this guy. He is weak to fire and earth. So, let's see. We'll use a, um, high fire gem on him. Awesome. Yeah, that way you can, you know, contribute to the offense a little bit more. Yikes! Um, let's get a high heal on him. Yeah, having her be able to react whenever anybody's in critical status is so good. Gives her an instant reaction. Uh-oh. Yikes. Oh, well, they're weak to Earth anyway, so what the hell does it really matter? Oh, I thought that would have killed him. Eh, there we go. Okay, so, yeah, go ahead and now go up on this guy, but what you want, and I'm going to stick Rebecca over there, on the hex that the other Skyfish was just on, you want, um... You want, uh, let's actually, let's try a heavy crush. You want somebody who's standing on the hex in order to get the treasure for this battle. So yeah, we'll just stick Rebecca over there since she doesn't really have anything else to do besides just heal. But it's nice to have her there anyway. And then blast the crap out of this guy until he dies. Uh, Sonic Vision should take him out. It's pretty simple, but, you know, it's as long as you have a healer going on, um, you should be fine, but a lot of times they like to hit you in your weaknesses with with uh, blast spells. So yeah, make sure that you have a healer for that. Okay, so let me get this straight. For the random battles that we just had, we had 18,000 experience. For this boss fight, we got 19,000 experience. You get 1,000 more experience for the boss. That's a bunch of crap. Oh, hey, this is uh, Mary's father. Greg's father-in-law, or former father-in-law, I guess. Oh, yeah. I mean, that is your home, but you wanted to move on by moving to Harmond instead. No, Greg's gonna be seeking revenge against Kartikeia, and he's gonna be busy saving the world! Oh, is that why you want to go back to Gunong to get drunk? Just drink away all your sorrows and your problems? I guess that's good enough reason as any. I wonder if we go back to Gunong if Joseph will actually be there. Hmm. Oh, remind me to check that out, viewers. Anyway, continue on. Let's see what we got going on now. Okay, so here we have a pole that we have to climb up, but there's going to be two exits from this room. You don't want to take the first exit that you come to. You want to go past it. Yeah, this is a faster move. Up to the second exit. Yeah, this highest exit. So keep that in mind. It's kind of a pain in the ass and it's annoying, but it is what it is. Speaking of annoying things, let's check out this. Whoa, plaque. Okay, so two winds will from the skies. The western wind caresses the southern lands, while the eastern wind soothes its own home. Okay. Yeah, there's a puzzle here. So what we need to do is uh, use detector, and what that's going to do is reveal even more uh, of these little windmills that we have to deal with. And some treasure! Okay, so now we need to hit each of these fans hitting a different windmill. So the western fan, western, grab on the damn thing, blows on the southern 
and then this one caresses its own lands. So the eastern one is going to be hit the eastern windmill. There we go. Okay. Um, sure, if you say so. So now let's head on back down to the previous um, doorway that I bypassed earlier. Whoa! Slide on down there, and off we go. Yeah, line up your camera angles. It's highly important. Oh, another monologue? Hmm. I'm sure you would be. I mean, I don't know why you would possibly get caught up in saving the world if you had, you know, a family to provide for. Oh, uh, probably. I mean, your wife would be alive and your son would be alive. I'm sure you'd be very happy. Yeah, you know what they say, ignorance is bliss. Okay, well, Rebecca and Avril actually agree on something for once. Rebecca doesn't want to kill Avril. <laughs> um, okay. So you're telling me the less you know, the more open you are for how you want to live your life? That doesn't make any sense. Like, if you have a college education or you have, you know, a high degree, then you have many more options as how you want to spend your life. You have many more opportunities open for you as far as, you know, where you want to move or what job you want to take or, um, you know, it may, you know, maybe you are, um, maybe you majored in like a really, um, a really high demand field and some other country is trying to recruit you to like, you know, move there or a different company located somewhere else and they pay your moving expenses rather than if you just have like a high school education or you dropped out of high school, God forbid. And, you know, who's going to be recruiting you then? Nobody's going to want your skills. You're just unskilled labor at that point. So, no offense to anybody out there, but just saying, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 You always make the right choice, Dean, because the game tells us that you do. Oh! Chuck's actually going to get some dialogue? Chuck and Carol never get dialogue, so yeah, that's kind of nice. Oh, shut up, Carol! Ugh! They should keep you with no dialogue. I can't stand you. He sort of bounces around, too, which is annoying. Yeah. You're living a good life, Greg. It's not so bad. So, let's go over here and check out what this plaque has to say as well. Why don't my arms keep on... Oh, because I'm climbing the poles. Okay, so six flowers, gazing at the blossoms in the sky. Two release their crimson petals to blow in the wind. So you have to remember where we had the fans blowing and then make those red. Well, the other four are going to be blue. So let's do this. Uh, let's see. First things first, we need to use the detector to open up more of these um, little things to hit. Then we're going to do our, uh, let's see, we'll do the blue ones first. And the first one I want to hit is the one to the northeast. There we go. And then the southeastern one. Then the western one. There we go. And then finally the northwestern one. That one right there. Then the other ones should be red. And that should be exactly what I have to do. Hopefully. If I screwed this up, I'll be so pissed. Perfect! Yeah, so this is kind of a really complicated puzzle, but it's not that bad. Just uh, continue on our way. And let's see, here we have another pole to climb, but we have multiple poles, and again, we need to set our uh, camera up. It's hard to see, but we have another pole that way. Go set our camera up so we can kind of go from pole to pole without falling. There we go, up we go. Go up as high as you can. And let's see, so this way. Up some more. Um, yeah, let's go back. Come on. Do I have it? Perfect. As high as I can. And I think that that's all I need. So, okay, so there's the door. Okay, go this way. There we are. Nice. Okay, I made it. Woohoo! Okay, here we are with this fan. And let's read the plaque. The wind has to be at your back to make a path forward. Yeah. So what we have to do is move this fan. We'll take it this way first. And now the wind's at my back. Head over here. And we get some treasure! Ooh, a point stabilizer for the golem that I'll never use! Ah. 
Oh my god, I'm like freaking out about falling off of this thing, but yeah, we should be okay. Okay, make it this way. That's the way that we came. Yeah, that's the way that we came. So I want to make it. Let's see. That's the exit, but I don't want to go to the exit. I want to go this way to get another treasure. There we go. Oh my gosh. Like, the floors aren't even slippery, and I'm like, I feel like I'm gonna slip anyway. It's like freaking me out. Yeah, if you don't have, like, your camera angles perfect, perfectly lined up, then you can get really screwed really quickly. Okay, let's see. Can I even turn this another way? I don't think I can. Oh, I can do it that way. Okay, yeah, that's exactly what I want to do anyway. Okay, so there we go. And camera angles, there we go. Perfect! Oh, man. This is, like, stressing me out. I shouldn't get so stressed out, but it's like, you know, the wind is kind of pushing you, and you only have one way to go, and, you know, you want to make sure that you're not falling off the edge. It's just, it's, it just stresses me out, and I'm easily stressed out, so I guess that's probably what it is, but, eh. Get a Galakar. Head on in okay, here. so let's go check out and see what we got going on here. Ooh, the Soul Niger. Nice. Ooh, it's also some treasure. Well, what do we got? Oh, gold moon. Nice. Uh, let's see. There is the, um, plaque to figure out what I have to do. They follow the flow of time as they wait the day of judgment. Okay, so think of this as 12 o'clock. So that's kind of cl clockwise. This one is not going clockwise, so we need to turn the fan wrong way. This way to hit the flame so it continues clockwise. That one's going clockwise. This one is not going clockwise, so go ahead and turn the fan that way as well. And turn fans to open doors. But before we do that, let's head over here to the Soul Niger. And what I want to do is take Rebecca out of my party for right now, throw in Avril, because there's actually some good stuff to steal here. And we've not one, not two, but three Soul Nigers to deal with. Yeah. And we want to kill the one on the Earth Hex first, because... These guys are all weak to Earth, let me just show you. Yeah, they're all resistant to wind, and they're all weak to Earth, and they all have attack apples to steal as well. So, we'll go ahead and steal from you, first of all. But hey, awesome. And let's bring you over here, and you can get your nice critical hit on him. Nice. Ugh. Yeah, they don't really hit that hard, though, which is pretty nice, so you can go... So, so you can get away with having, um... Having, um, Avril over here using her, um, you know what, let's see, oh, high break doesn't really do much to him, because he's on the Earth Hex, that's why, but you know what, if I just use a regular blast, it'll be fine. You can get away with having, um, Avril in the party for a little bit, because these guys don't hit that hard, and they actually miss a lot, and they just kind of look around for a bit, so, yeah, I wouldn't worry about it too much, um, yeah, we can, we can quicken this Hex, why not, so quicken this Hex, and then just have these two go all out against this guy. Hopefully you can steal what you need to steal before I can bring Rebecca in. Really? Steal the damn thing. Come on, I have a freaking... Uh-uh! Wrong one! Eh, it's not that big of a deal. Oh, I'm at the second force level. Sweet. Go ahead and get a nice critical hit on him. Uh, okay. Um, can you, like, steal it now? This would be lovely. There we go. Oh, good. You move closer for easier stealing. And they're gonna do nothing! Let's see, get you blasted. There we go. Um, yeah, just attack. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Wow, they miss a lot. Okay, just gotta steal from this last one. Then I can bring in Rebecca, get some nice healing going on, because I kind of need it. There we go. It would also be really nice if this guy would move off the Earth, Earth Hex, so then I could really hit their weaknesses. But that might be too much to ask. And while you're here, let's go ahead and fragile them. Um, let's see. We can fragile this one just so we can get them down soon enough. There we go. Yeah, I'm glad I, I fragiled that one because uh, these guys are moving away. Whoa! Avril really got nailed. Um, please survive, please survive. Thank you! Yeah, as long as she survives, that's all I care about because she's going to be going away anyway. Um, and Rebecca's going to be taking her place. But if you just use regular physical hits against these guys, they will take forever. But we should be fine once I get Rebecca in here. And uh, there we go. Yeah, now I have that Earth Hex. Perfect. 
And even though he's fragile on it, I really don't care. I want to hit these guys' weaknesses. It's going to make it so much easier, so much nicer. And you know what? Let's put him over here, too. And then he can start heavy crushing these guys on the weaknesses, too. And then Rebecca's just going to hang out and heal them so that they don't die on the fragile hex. There we go. Uh-oh. Oh, wow. Huh. He did a water attack on a fire hex, and it still barely did anything to us. That's pretty nice. Okay, so one down, two to go. Um, you know what? Let's quicken this hex. Yeah, because... Okay, that'll work. Um, continue your healing on... Yeah, this hex. If, if Rebecca dies, she dies. I'll use a revive fruit. It's not that big of a deal. It might actually be easier for me just to put Rebecca on that hex, actually. Oh, wow, that was a lot of damage. Um, huh. do you guys have anything, like, nice? Like, what does this do? Huh. Let's give it a shot. Why not? It's not going to do any animation. Whoa, 10,000 damage! Yeah, that's pretty nice. Um, let's use maybe a high break. Yeah, that's going to do more damage than just a regular physical hit, but we got to get ourselves healed. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, yeah, keep going. This is gonna take quite some time, so... It's, this is, I mean, it is what it is, and I'm just gonna fast forward the rest of this battle. And next time on Let's Play Wild Arms 5, we will complete our exploration of the TF Towers F, and our revenge against Kartike himself. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.